In this video, we'll learn about using the average rate of change to identify whether or not a function is a linear function. The main idea is that we want to take advantage of a nice property of linear functions, which is that no matter which two points you choose on your linear function, if you compute the average rate of change, that average rate of change always works out to be the same number. So if we want to try to figure out if this is a linear function, what we're going to do is we're going to compute the average rate of change between each of the pairs of points in this function. So for example, between the first two pairs of points, the average rate of change, which would be the slope if this actually turns out to be the linear function, that average rate of change is going to be the change in y divided by the change in x. So the change in y is going to be 13 minus 10, and the change in x is going to be negative 2 minus negative 1. On the top we get 3, negative 2 minus minus 1 turns out to be negative 1, and so our average rate of change between that pair of points is negative 3. But we don't yet have enough information to definitively say if this is a linear function. We have to keep going. In the next pair of points, our change in y over change in x turns out to be 10 minus 7 divided by negative 1 minus 0. On the top we get 3, and on the bottom we get negative 1, and that gives us an average rate of change of negative 3. Now those two rates of change are the same, but we still aren't quite convinced that this function is linear over the entire domain that we're looking at. So we really need to compute all of the different rates of change between all of these pairs of points. Our next rate of change is 7 minus 4 divided by 0 minus 1, and that gives us 3 divided by negative 1, which is negative 3. Keep going. Next pair of points, we've got 1 minus 4, just use the points in a different order just for fun, divided by 2 minus 1. We get negative 3 divided by 1, that works out to be negative 3. Remember that the order in which you choose your points for an average rate of change doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. And then finally for our last pair of points, we have 1 minus negative 2 divided by 2 minus 3. 1 minus minus 2 is positive 3, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, and so we get negative 3. So all these rates turned out to be the same, and because they're all the same, that means this function is linear. And in fact, it's a linear function whose slope is negative 3. All of those negative 3s that we got tell us that this really is a linear function, and that it has a slope of negative 3. All right, let's do one more example. So again, we have a table of values. We want to know, is this function linear? So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find average rate of change between all these pairs of points. For the first pair of points, we have change in y, which is negative 26 minus negative 4, divided by negative 2 minus negative 1. So on the top, negative 26 minus minus 4 is negative 22, and on the bottom, negative 2 minus minus 1 is negative 1. So that gives us an average rate of change of 22. For our next pair of points, change in y is negative 4 minus 2 divided by negative 1 minus 0. That gives us negative 6 on the top, negative 1 on the bottom. That gives us an average rate of change of 6. So right away we can tell that not all of these average rates of change are the same. We don't know what the average rate of change is for these pair of points, although we could figure it out. We also don't know what the average rate of change for, is for these pairs of points, but again we could figure that out. But we don't have to, because in order for this to be a linear function, all of the rates of change need to all be the same. And since they're not all the same, we can tell that just by looking at these first two, they're not all the same. That means that this function is not linear. So the only way to know for sure if a function is linear is to check all of the rates of change and make sure they're all the same. If some of them are the same and some of them are different, it's not linear. But as soon as you get an average rate of change that's different from the others, you can stop and you know your function is not linear.